Good morning, everybody. I think it's time to start. Let me turn on the webcam so that you can see me for a while, and then I will switch off in order to say bad word. Okay, now, um, so can you all hear me well? If you can hear me, please type yes into the chat window so that I know you are ready. Ah, good. Quế Dũng Nguyên. Very good. Very good. Okay, great. Um, so uh, we are ready to start and um, the meeting is now um, recorded. Now, um, in the uh, in our discussion today, we look at the uh, conceptual metaphor theory. Uh, we look at the uh, different types of conceptual metaphors, um, the structures of metaphors, and uh, uh, we will analyze the. Uh, motivation sources uh, for a lot of metaphors. Before we start, um, could you tell me again um, what topic did we discuss last time in our face-to-face -face meeting? Okay, last time we discussed a theory. Good. Okay, ICM, uh, Idealized Cognitive Models. Okay. Now, just a quick reminder. Okay, um, ICM or Idealized Cognitive Model is um, an alternative for the domain theory, the mental space theory, and the uh, semantic frames. Uh, it's uh, pop, you know it is recognized as the uh, most comprehensive uh, cognitive structure to account for concepts that we have when we use language. Um, now, in order to make sure that you have good um, uh, sound quality, I will turn off the webcam for a while. And I'm sorry for the noise you are hearing right now because uh, my home is near the secondary school and it looks like they are having a meeting. So uh, sometimes you hear uh, um, the uh, background voice from the speakers in the school. Now, um, uh, we need to uh, make sure that we uh, understand metaphor and metonymy. Um, sorry, metonymy, not okay, metonymy. Um, by you know, exploring the different figures of speech that we use in language. So, um, as a warm-up activities, uh, I want you to give me examples of these figures of speech that we use in everyday language or in literature. Now, um, antithesis. Can anybody give me an example of antithesis? Now anybody? Well, you have Google there, I think, and you can use it if you like. Okay, that's a nice example. Love is the antithesis of selfishness. Okay, great. Man proposes, God disposes. Good. Um, love is an ideal thing. Marriage is a real thing. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, those are very nice examples of antithesis, and uh, 
Now, basically, anti in 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 antithesis, the ideas are okay set down so that they are in sharp contrast. Okay, um, uh, with each other. That's a, a very um, uh, important point. So let me put it here in the chat window for you. Um, ideas are in sharp contrast with uh, each other. Now, um, so how about the next one? Uh, euphemism. Can you give me example of e yep okay that's the example I think of right away pass away okay to refer to death um, what else can you think of and uh, euphemism um Well, I can give you another example. Yeah, A cleaning technicians is. I'm not sure whether that is a euphemism. Cleaning technicians to mean cleaner. Well, you know what? We use euphemism to um um you know make. Uh, uh, distressing um, an uncomfortable expression to be uh, okay gentler yeah eliminate mean Q yeah that can be a good one on this one a flight of fancy mean uh, to lie okay ethnic cleansing well wow, I love that ethnic cleansing it's a very good example okay vertically challenged good okay so um in uh, euphemism um our hearts are distressing expressions is replaced by uh, um, Zantala one. Now next, uh, let's keep uh, going with hyperbole. Give me another example of this figure of speech. Hyperbole. All right, thanks a million times. Great, that's a very nice example. What else? Okay, S O S a hue. Very nice. Good. Now, any others? Yeah, I could eat a horse. That's also a very nice hyperbole. Okay. Yeah, your suitcase weighs a ton, so very nice example. Well, so in hyperbole, okay, we uh, deliberately, well, sometimes I because you know my typing window is too small sometimes I have spelling mistake there so please just ignore um, in Hyperbo we deliberately uh, use uh, exaggeration uh, for a certain effect Right, and you can have, you can see lots of examples in our chat window. I see if I can make the chat window bigger. 
Well, it doesn't allow. Okay. Now, uh, how about Oxymoron then? Now, does it does it sound familiar to you? Did you take an introductory course in uh, literature? Uh, I'm pretty sure that you have heard about these things. Uh, figures of speech, love, hate, relationship. Okay, good. Can anybody else find any other example? Act naturally or well, I'm, I'm I'm not sure whether act naturally isn't oxymoron because basically in order to have yeah, bittersweet is a very good example because in order to have an oxymoron, words, um, you know, contradictory words are combined okay, together in one suggestion so, cruel kindness yeah exactly that's a very nice example cruel kindness bitter sweet okay pretty ugly <laughs> well that sounds nice Okay. Amazingly awful. Hmm. Okay. Good example. So, um, Osimoron is a kind of figure of speech in which we, uh, uh, use contradictory uh, uh, words in okay one single expressions okay let's move on to the next figure of speech in language uh, synodos can you find me an example Now, in synodos, the name of a part is used for the whole. Okay, the name of a part is used for a whole. Bread for food. Okay, but, um, you know, it's, um, it's not really like... <coughs> A regular expression in language. Can you find any okay, expressions? Uh, wheels for car, hands for sailors, own hands on deck. Okay. So, uh, in a sense, synodos is very uh, similar to metonymy, right? Or we can say, yeah, a fleet of. Uh, hundred sails. So instead of saying a fleet of a uh, hundred ships, we say a fleet of a hundred sails um, to make the language uh, expression more figurative. Right, and lastly, uh, before we uh, end this activity, simile. Um, it's very uh, familiar to us. Now, please type an example using a simile for me. 
So in Simile, we make direct comparison using ads or like. Okay. Yeah, he eats like a pig. My love is like a red, red rose. Okay. Now later in our discussions of the topic, we will try to tell the difference between simile and metaphor. Okay. And uh, okay. I think my love is like a red rose. Um, it sounds very much like a metaphor. Okay. Although we have light there. Okay. As busy as a bee is a good simile. As hard as a rock. Okay. Okay. Um now so the difference between um, a simile and a metaphor is that um, with um, with simile we usually um, uh, we usually mean something true. So if I say Ashin is as strong as an ox, okay, I really mean that Ashin is very strong and the ox okay, is very strong so I compare the okay, actions with an ox now um, metaphor is um, um, uh, a little bit different um, uh, in in metaphor okay, uh, the, the, the comparison is not literally true so actions is not a lion right uh, when I say Ashin is a lion, I um, try to map the characteristics, the qualities of the lion to Ashin. And uh, okay, only human can make this kind of processing. Uh, we, okay, through okay, the uh, conceptual processing, we know that the actual meaning of this language expression is that Ashin is very courageous, is very prey, and uh, is very uh, okay, tough. So, um, okay, um, the okay, easiest way to tell difference between simile and metaphor is uh, in terms of form. Simile use like or as. Um, in, in metaphor, normally, okay, we do not use like or as, but as uh, the example that uh, Van Ann put in uh, her chat window, uh, my love is like a red rose, um, that is a metaphor rather than a simile. Because, um, because here, we do not we do not literally mean that okay, uh, love is a rose. Now, um, so um, the motivations for conceptual metaphor uh, lies in the uh, okay in the cognitive level and uh, in the past meeting uh, in our class we have already um, looked at um, a metaphor called love um, is a journey okay. and um, uh, and then very soon we will see an uh, explanations of Lake Hope for uh, this metaphor. Now, when we say love is a journey, we 
are trying to map the structures okay, of a journey that we experience in our everyday interaction with the world towards okay, the, uh, uh, the, the concept structure of love. So, if you look at the okay at the table on the slide, you will see that in the journey domain, uh, we call this the source domain because um, okay this is okay this is the this is the okay the domain or the structure that we have from our uh, interaction with the real, uh, with the real world, right? So in the journey domain, we have travelers, we have vehicles, uh, we have the distance that need to travel, uh, the, 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 the distance that needs to be covered, the obstacles during the journeys that the travelers may encounter, uh, the decision that we need to make uh, during the journeys, the destination of the journeys. Now, all of those are the different elements. Uh, different parts uh, of the uh, journey domain. Now, with each of these elements, we can find a corresponding elements in the love domain. For example, okay, in love, we have lovers, we have a love relationship, uh, and in that relationship, there are events, okay, there are datings, there are meetings, there are Okay, uh, uh, chances okay, for the lovers to okay, make their relationship memorable. Um, their progress that is made and their difficulties uh, experienced sometimes. Uh, their choices, okay, obviously. Okay, uh, and and um, usually okay, the goal of um, good um, relationship is to uh, together okay, the lovers will reach the common goals in life. Now, um, to help you understand uh, uh, in, in more detail the uh, structure of uh, Of this metaphor, love is a journey. Uh, I want you to do these activities. Okay, can you see the YouTube video that I have just posted um, on our screen? Can you see the videos? Good. Great. Now, um, this is a video of Lakop, George Lakop, um, the very important figure in uh, the concept of metaphor theory that I have been talking about you know, uh, in our class. Um, uh, in this video, you can see him in a lecture in which he explains about uh, how he came up with the idea of uh, the conceptual metaphor theory. And uh, he's talking about um, the uh, uh, love is a journey uh, metaphor that we are looking at. Okay. I want to tell you a little about how I started working on conceptual metaphor. Uh, this is a true story. Um, in 1978, uh, I was teaching an undergraduate seminar with five students. Uh, at the time, I was interested in it was called uh, a for an art form in America called performance art, and I was giving an undergraduate seminar in. Uh, performing a 
performance art and linguistics. And then there we went through various topics, reading papers on those topics. And on the day that we were to read, read a paper on metaphor, uh, it was a very cold, rainy day. Uh, we all sat around a little table. There were five students. And one woman in the class came in a little bit late, and she was, it was raining, so she was all wet, and she was crying. And we tried not to notice that she was crying, which was difficult because she was sitting at the table right here, <laughs> right there. And, um, you know, so we went on with the class, and I said, well, okay, on page so-and-so, Professor so-and-so claims the following. What do you think of this? Go look around the room, go look at her, and she says, I can't do this today. <laughs> I've got a metaphor problem my boyfriend. <laughs> and she looks around and she says, maybe you can help. Well, this was Berkeley in 1970. We said, of course. <laughs> we formed what was called a, a um, you know, a little group for group therapy. And uh, we said, okay, tell us your problem. <laughs> she said, well, on the way to class, my boyfriend was walking with my boyfriend, and he said something that upset me. He said that our relationship had hit a dead-end street. A dead-end street. Right? And he, he said, I don't really understand this very well. You know, maybe you can help me get understand it. So we said, look, if... It, you know, we said, if it's hit a dead end street, you can't keep going the way you've been going. You may have to turn back. And then we realized that English had a lot of expressions in which love was seen as a kind of journey. So, for example, you can say of a love relationship, it's been a long, bumpy road. Uh, you can say um, things like, um, uh, we're going in different directions. We're at a crossroads in the relationship. Um, uh, you can say the marriage is on the rocks. Uh, it's off the track. We're spinning our wheels. Um, and even an airplane image. We may have to bail out. <laughs> Take a parachute. <laughs> now, um, as we, you know, and by the way, being a linguistics professor, I dutifully wrote down all of these expressions. You made a list. And I said, gee, this is an interesting list, you know. Is there a generalization about this list? That's the question a linguist would ask. What is the generalization here? And we looked at this list and we said, well, in every case, love is seen as a journey. The lovers are the travelers. Well, the, what is the love relationship? The love relationship is the vehicle. Sometimes it's a car, sometimes a boat when you're on the rocks, a train when you're off the track, a plane when you're bailing out, you know, but some kind of vehicle, okay? So the love relationship is a vehicle. Write down love relationship, vehicle. Um, okay, uh, what about the, this journey? Where are you, where are you going? Well, there is, you have common life goals, and the common life goals are the destinations that you're trying to reach in this journey. Common destinations. So, common life goals, destinations. Okay. And what about these, the, why, why do you keep hitting dead end streets and spinning your wheels? Well, these are difficulties in a journey. So, it turns out that difficulties in the love relationship are difficulties in the journey. That is, they're impediments to travel, the things that keep you from getting to where you want to go. So, you're spinning your wheels, you can go on the rocks, etc. Okay, so we write these down, and they're completely systematic. They look like almost a mathematical mapping. Okay, okay. and um, you say, gee, that's very interesting. We have this... this um, uh, this generalization that looks like a mathematical mapping about these different expressions. 
And the woman says, I don't care about your generalization. My boyfriend is breaking up with me. <laughs> She said, he's thinking in terms of this metaphor. So I said, actually, that's interesting. How can you think in terms of a metaphor? The classical theory of metaphor doesn't talk about thinking in terms of a metaphor. How does this work? So we looked at a case. We said, okay, let's suppose you take something like we're spinning our wheels in this relationship. What do we know about spinning the wheels? Well, there's an image. The image is that there's a car and the wheels are turning. Is the car moving? The car is not moving. It's stuck. It's stuck in the in American. The term spinning your wheels applies to a case where the car is not moving. It's stuck in ice or sand or snow or something like that. The wheels digging in. The more you turn them, the more they dig in. Okay? So in this case, what you have is the vehicle is not moving. You put a lot of energy into getting it moving. You're trying to rock the car and move it or, or you know, get the wheels going and so on. And you feel frustrated. Okay? Now, what about in a love relationship? When you say we're spinning our wheels in this relationship, it means the relationship is not going anywhere. No progress toward common life goals. Secondly, it means you're putting a lot of energy. You want it to go somewhere. You're putting energy into it, and you feel frustrated. That is the reasoning that you do about travel is being mapped onto the reasoning you do about love via this mathematical mapping that research vehicle is the relationship and so on. So the idea here is that to understand the use of dead-end street, which means that you, you can't keep going the way you've been going. You have to do something else, either give up the relationship or turn and go some other direction. Okay? You have to do something else. That is the inference. There's an inference. It's said for a reason. It's said for that reason. Now, these, uh, by the way, uh, she did not make up with her boyfriend. But she found somebody else later on. She got a job. She got her PhD. She got married to a very nice man, and she's fine. <laughs> In fact, she's a chairman of a department. <laughs> Okay, so that's it. Um, so Charles Laycott um, has told us about how he uh, initially came up with the concept of metaphor theory, and um, he gave us a um, lot of expressions okay, um, to illustrate um, the uh, uh, the mappings on the structure of uh, the concept of metaphor. Love. Uh, is a journey. Okay, so can you just type again in the chat? We know what uh, expressions uh, uh, did uh, Leiko mentions? For example, yeah, our relationship had hit. A dead end street. Well, that's it, the expressions. Uh, the woman uh, in 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 the class uh, told him about her relationship with the boyfriend. Yeah, love is a long bumpy road. Good. Do you recall any other language expressions that um, that that uh, yeah, our love is off the tracks? Nice. Do you recall any others? Yeah, we have to bail out.
Yeah, we are at the crossroads. So, um, okay, you see um, the, 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 the structure of a life journey uh, is mapped uh, onto the structure of uh, love in uh, a very similar way to mathematical mapping. Uh, that's the term that Lakeup used, uh, and I think I should put it again here. Mathematical mapping. Okay. Now, if you look at this uh, table, and 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 uh, instead of making a table, you draw two domain. Okay. Uh, and in each domain, you have these elements with the mapping. Uh, you will see that they look very much like the mappings from okay, one okay, set of values to another set of values in mathematics. Okay, um, now another important uh, point that uh, Lakob make in his conceptual metaphor theory is that Conceptual metaphors are always unidirectional. It's one way. So the mapping can only be from journey uh, domain on to the love domain, and it will not be the other ways around. Uh, now, the, the <coughs> sometimes you may see cases in which uh, in 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 which um, um, the two metaphors share okay same domain right? same source domain and target domain but they are actually very different now let's look at this example now uh, with people and machines um, we have these language expressions John always gets the high scores in math he's a human calculator he's a human calculator uh, he's so efficient. He just a machine. Okay, he's just a machine. Wow. He had a nervous breakdown. Nervous breakdown. Okay, is obviously the uh, expression motivated by okay our conceptualization of machines. And then we also have a. Um, Another conceptual metaphor, uh, machines are people, as we can see in uh, the uh, okay, language expressions uh, of, our, of our slide. I think my computer hates me, it keeps deleting my data. Okay. And this car has a wheel of its own. I don't think my car wants to start this morning. Now the important thing um, here is that although these two conceptual metaphors have okay, uh, the same domains, people are machines and machines are people, um, they, are, they are about very different things. And their mappings are essentially, they are very different. So um, um, the, the key point of conceptual metaphors being unidirectional still hold. Now, um, in the people's and machines metaphors, um, we see that the mechanical attributes um, associated with machines are mapped onto people. For example, the speed of the machine, the, the efficiency of the machines, uh, the part whole structure and the fact that machines sometimes uh, hands machines sometimes break down now though um, though uh, features of the machines are mapped onto um, people uh, in machines are people we see, we we see very different mapping um, in machines are people we see that the designs and uh, the the uh, um, the uh, the mental attitudes uh, of human beings are mapped onto machines. Um, so to make things short, 
okay even with this case when we have two metaphors sharing the same domains um, the mappings are still okay one way unidirectionals now um, we are going to look at the motivation for the target uh, domain and the source domain before I move on uh, do you have any questions or any comments any questions just say yes or no into the chat window because that's the only way I that's the only way I get your response okay good thank you for the response so no questions Okay, so people are machines and vice versa. Okay, so why love is a journey, but not the other way around. <laughs> uh, that's a nice question, Horn. Um, now, the nature of conceptual metaphor okay, and, and metaphorical thinking is that we... Okay, we map our experience from the real world okay on to okay our abstract thinking so uh with people's and machine you see that actually um okay actually we map okay our experience with machines onto okay onto people onto okay uh um uh, human beings uh, and and with uh, machines, uh, people, we also actually map our experience with the with with the people's designs, with the people feeling, with what we observe in our real world, onto the machines. Okay, um, in 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 order to talk about their okay their their uh, conditions, their okay. Uh, readiness for the work so okay even with machines and people okay we also see that it is a case of mappings uh our um our real world experience onto abstract thinking and that's why love is a journey because journey is the you know experience and the, the journey domain is the the, the, the actual experience that we gain from the world okay, around us and uh, we do not say or uh, we do not have the metaphor journey is a love because um, it's not the other way around because because okay uh, a journey domain is not an abstract domain that we want to um, talk about metaphorically well does it make things better for you <laughs> say yes or no into the chat window please okay great thank you um are there any other questions okay looks like we have no other questions and uh, let's move on now, um, so uh, we now look at the motivations for metaphors. Actually, I have just talked a little bit about that. Um, the motivations of the metaphors are the um, okay, the real world experience that we use in order to uh, express, in order to uh, illustrate the abstract concepts and um, um, uh, in okay, um, every 
century in 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 um, different periods of time, even in every decade, we have certain kinds of metaphors that uh, are called conventional topics. I mean, the kinds of topics that are very popular okay, in in a uh, okay, um, certain time. Uh, for example, uh, okay, in the 18th century, watches, um, uh, watches was very popular, and uh, you could read uh, poems. Okay, during this time that have okay, uh, metaphors uh, uh, relating to watches. Um, you could uh, read stories um, um, in which uh, watches uh, are discussed metaphorically. Um, and um, in 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 the time that we are living in now okay i think you can guess very okay quickly the kinds of metaphors that are very popular right now this year in 2013 okay so what metaphor okay are popular can you give me the question i um, can you can you give me the, the answers? What metaphors are popular right now in 2013 where we are living? Probably it's not about watches. Any ideas? Now we, we have learned that metaphors actually take roots from our experience with the real world. And um, so, the, the the kinds of topics that are very common okay, in the world around us will uh, naturally uh, become the source domains for the metaphors. Well, so let me give you give you one example. For example, a uh, computer. Right. Computers are um, probably okay, the very popular domains in our metaphor thinking, uh, okay, at least during the first part of the 21st century. Can you think of any okay, language expressions in both well, English or Vietnamese that, that, that illustrate um, illustrate computers being used at the source domains in our thinking for example we may say uh, we may say uh, I want to shut down now. Okay, when I am tired and I want to go to bed, I want to sleep, right, I may say, I want to shut down now. Um, uh, you know, uh, Recently, I tend to forget things, and I am slow, okay, in uh, doing language tests. Okay, I am not as fast as you are when doing IELTS tests or TOEFL test. And <laughs> this is what I tell my students in my class. Uh, my RAM, okay, is smaller than yours okay 
you know the random access memory okay uh, of, of the computer basically um, the bigger RAM you have for your computer the more um, tasks uh, you can uh, do um, concurrently and uh, when I say my RAM is smaller than yours okay, it means that my memory okay, is slower than you okay, and then, 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 then your memory and uh, it's hard for me to score okay, uh, as well as you do um, can you think of any other examples even in Vietnamese Huh? Can you can you think of any examples in Vietnamese? Yeah. Okay. That's a very good example. I need a restart. Okay, I want to recharge my battery after a hard working day. Good. Refresh your life. Good. To see Actually, those ideas come from the computer's domain. They come from the world, um, the real world that we live in. And these kinds of expressions uh, were obviously never used uh, 40 or 50 years ago when computer was not popular. Um... So how about Vietnamese language expressions? Can you can you think up any expressions? Okay. I think so. Lỗi hệ thống. Okay, trong giáo dục. Okay, it is a system. Error. Do you think up? <laughs> it's, it's interesting that you can find expression quite quickly in English, but not in Vietnamese. Um, okay, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, okay, I'm trying to uh, link to the computer domain. So, can you think of any expressions in Vietnamese that you know starts from uh, the computer source domain? For example, uh, cậu đó có bộ vi xử lý mạnh thật. Right. So when we talk to okay, each other about somebody else being able to work very fast, okay, and efficiently, uh, thằng đó có IC tốt thật, hay là nó có cái bộ vi xử lý mạnh thật. Uh. Um, okay, um, this is a joke. Uh, và mình là cái TV. Okay, this is also about okay, electronics devices. Okay. Okay. Uh. Anten đời cũ. Only đời đầu. You see, okay, this kind of metaphorical mapping um, uh, only appeared recently, okay, during the times of uh, computers and uh, electronic devices. Uh. Um, now, certain areas. Uh, up, um, uh, language permanently attract large numbers of metaphors. Uh, for example, the human body, uh, human activities. Why? Because okay, um, when we interact with the real world, we use 
our body parts very very frequently and that's why uh, the direct experience that we have uh, from our body from our activities uh, can easily map uh, into our into our thinking um, Well, let me try to think up an example for you um, about okay, um, for example, hat for intelligence. Right, so um, we very often use uh, this uh, body part okay, to talk about intelligence, like uh, he has uh, a good head on his shoulder. Okay. Um, now, can you uh, find any other examples of similar cases? Now, uh, this is another that I okay, have just got from uh, the article I have uh, written face for honor. Now, uh, with face for honors, we may have the expressions. Yeah. They've had some bad luck, but they put a brave face on their problems. Um, he asked them um, to put out a cigarette, but they um, just laugh in his face. Okay, you make me lose my face. Okay. Uh, we can simply say you should save his face, right? So save face, lose face. Okay. Now, um, so in Vietnamese, I'm pretty sure that we also have a lot of uh, similar expressions uh, uh, in which uh, the face as a body part is used to. Um, to uh, talk about honors, can you think of any okay, language expressions in Vietnamese? For example, uh, như táp nước vào mặt. Okay. Right? Nói như táp nước vào mặt. Mắng như táp nước vào mặt. Okay. In this case, the face um, is used to talk about honor uh, can you think of any other expressions in your language in Vietnamese uh, 
for example tái to mặt lớn ok xem mặt là mắt hình dòng is is ok but it's more it's not about honor ok xem mặt là mắt hình dòng it's more about uh, humans personality ok dạ yeah. không còn mặt mũi gặp ai yeah that's it can you think of any other Uh, you for example sometimes we may hear people saying okay mặt chơ chán bóng okay and and okay this expression is used to talk about people who okay um uh what do i say who do not feel same phone uh, about bad things that they did um, they do not have okay, uh, honor okay. or we can say mát mặt right đồ mặt dày is a good one too okay. mát mặt so we can say mát mặt với lại hàng xóm mát mặt với lại anh em mát mặt với đồng nghiệp Right. So that is just an example. Uh, we can find okay, many other examples uh, of face, head, hands, uh, and then other body parts uh, uh, that are used to talk about uh, abstract uh, ideas and concepts. Um, now, some kinds of metaphors are... Um, uh, some kinds of metaphors um, uh, specific to the cultures like the story of Gom and Pha I saw you uh, previously in our class uh, by uh, the Canadian writers um, Joe's Rule okay. and uh, from the story we see that uh, in Vietnamese cultures we have a very special metaphor uh, um, uh, sex, okay, is food. Now, um, so the source domains for metaphors are usually okay, old, uh, simple, concrete, uh, and 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 very common. Uh, domains, very common concept that we see in our world around us. So we have body parts and we have just analyzed an example with face, uh, with head. Uh, we can have animals, we can have plants, we can have weather, containers, uh, Um, we can have uh, buildings, nutrients, and world. Well, um, right now, let's have a little practice activities. Okay, source domain. Now, so look at the expressions I'm posting uh, into our chat window. She's in the flower of youth. She's past her bloom. 
uh, he's a birding artist. Um, she's a late pluma. Now, so what metaphor can you identify in this case? The source domain for these metaphors are plants. Okay, very good. That's very fast. Okay, the people are plants. Uh, now, let's go again with. Uh, these language expressions okay so how about this one uh she was energized by the applause. And I'm on charge and full of energy. So what metaphor can you identify? Okay, batteries as the um, as the source domain. So the metaphor here is uh, what people are batteries. All right. Okay, people are machines. Uh, to be more exact, yeah, people are battery. Now, how about this expression? He has bright hopes. Uh, and this example, the clouds were a glimmer of hope that rain might come. And I have very dim hope that he will recover. Okay, it's harder to identify the source domain in this case. But can you identify the source domain for the expressions? Um, not really. I I don't think that uh, that that um, we are talking about weather in this case. You know very dim hope that he will recover but that's a good guess okay great light light right now here we have this metaphor we are talking about hope as a target domain, okay, and uh, light, okay, either one, okay, um, that is used at the uh, source domain. So hope is light. So that's why we can say now. Let's look at again, again at the um, expression bright hope, okay, glimmer of hope, a very dim hope. So okay, obviously. Okay, those are the expressions that we use to talk about light. And so hope is light. Uh, now, this is our last track before we move on to another. See, touch for recognition. Uh, He was drooling over her. <laughs> okay. And uh, his hungers for her touch. 
Now these are the expression that I take from uh, Lakeo um, from Lakeo's website. Lust, okay, is water or food. Well, you are almost there. Very good guess, Warren. But it's it's nearly okay. Uh, it's nearly correct. Behavior. Eating activity, not not really sells. Or well, sometimes we have this expression too. Yeah, sex star. Now in this case, uh, we see expression talking about hunger. Okay, and here we have design. Human design is hunger. Okay, bring him inside, bring him inside. Right, so now you know, okay, the, 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 the common source domains in conceptual metaphor. Now, the, the, the target domains are, okay, the abstract, complex, on the new ideas that we want to talk about. So uh, on the screen, you can see a list of the uh, common uh, target domains. Um, they can be technology, they can be social chain, they can be religious chain, uh, explorations, invention, discovery, about well, uh, microscope, uh, very big topics. Okay, very big. Uh, things that we talk about uh, and micro scope uh, topic live war love now if you look at the list you see that um, these are these are very abstract no, normally very abstract topics and in order to okay, make uh, these abstract topics uh, more understandable okay uh, very often people uh, use metaphor. Now again, um, please try to um, please try to get the metaphor in these language expression that I'm going to post. Um, Now, look at the expression. He has a heart of gold and she's make up tougher stuff. Uh, sometimes we say she's the iron lady. Uh, right, the iron lady of the company. Right. Now, so what target domains is um, referred to in these cases? Can you identify the target domains? Uh, no, no, metals, um, uh, 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 materials, those are the source domain. I want you to identify the target domain. Yeah, personality. That's very good. Yeah. In this case, we see that personality okay, is okay. Metal are okay, uh, materials, to be more exact. Right. So personality is material. Um, now 
Now, so look at the expression I'm posting on to your chat. We know he's better writer than I am, and he's widening distance. We've been playing chess for years, and he's finally pulling ahead of me. And the arms race. Right. So, what are the target domains for the expressions? Good competitions. Okay, so in this case, we have this metaphor, right? Competitions is a race. Okay. Competition is a race. Now, so look at the expression. You make my blood boy. Uh, he's just blowing steam up. He erupted. He exploded. Okay. Yeah, very quick. Anger. Okay. Anger. He has a fiery temper, for example. Okay. Now, in this case, we see that um, as some of you have identified, the target domain is anger, and is he. Okay, um, illustrated by the structures are hot fluid or anger is heat. Yeah, that's very good. Okay, so uh, if you Google um, and and play around, you can see a lot more language expressions that we use uh, very often in our daily life. Um, that 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 are motivated by conceptual metaphors. Um, we will see that uh, um, in our Amdenin system uh, in a couple of moments. And uh, before I stop here, I also want to draw your attention to uh, the two kinds of metaphors, uh, conventionalized metaphor and, and um, novel metaphor. Now, um, in conventionalized metaphors, um, we can see that uh, they have become integrated into language expressions that we actually we do not feel them as new we do not feel that these are figures of speech so we can say these things okay uh, very frequently in our everyday language we have entered the 21st century uh, without having any feeling that we are using a metaphor the reason is um, these metaphors have become so popular, so common, so uh, frequently used that they become conventionalized. And we just feel them as very regular language expressions. So I finish this in two hours. Right, so these language expressions are actually, as you see, motivated by a time is space metaphor. And those um, in in the uh, uh, example in 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 the bottom of the slide, as you see, they are in love. He fell into deep depressions. Uh, states are containers motivate these language expressions. Right. So um, these very popular 
and uh, frequently use uh, conceptual metaphors are the kinds of metaphors that George Lakoff uh, analyzed and discussed in his very famous uh, publications, uh, Metaphors We Lead By. And uh, there's another kind of metaphor which is uh, not so familiar to us in our everyday language. They are normally used in literature and uh, sometimes they are used uh, as um, a, a, a figure of speech in language. Now these metaphors are called novel metaphor. So um, when we say uh, Juliet is the son or the surgeon is a butcher, uh, we see that they are not common in ordinary speech. They are not conventionalized. That's the, the big difference. Um, now, in these two cases, as you see, the, the, the target domain is the focus. So when we say Julius is the son, we focus the attention on the subject being talked about, Juliet. Okay. Or when we say the surgeon is a butcher, uh, we focus our attention on to uh, the subject, uh, the, the, the surgeons. So, uh, in conventionalized metaphors, the two domains are equally important, and the structure of the source domain is mapped onto the task domain. Why in the novel metaphor, uh, uh, the uh, okay, uh, task domain um, get the focus. The task domain is the one that uh, stand out okay, uh, in the comparisons. Well, uh, I think that's it. Uh, this um, topic on uh, conceptual metaphor is intended to uh, okay, uh, to spread over to uh, meetings and uh, so far we have okay, studied about the different figures of speech about the structures of metaphor uh, we look at the source domain the touch domains and how they are mapped onto each other uh, before we stop our online lectures and uh, okay, look a little bit at our M learning system, again, do you have any questions? Everybody, any questions or comments? Okay, um, well that's a very good question. Why conceptual metaphor must be capitalized? Um, perhaps this is because, um, because of the um, convention that Lacob used when he published his book, Metaphor we live by. Originally in that book, all of those conceptual metaphors are okay, capitalized. And um, the, okay, uh, the, the uh, uh, researchers that follow him uh, also use that convention. However, in a um, lot of other books and a lot of other reading, we also see people okay, uh, not using capitalize uh, letters uh, when they uh, discuss um, conceptual metaphor. So um, um, the ideas of capitalizing I uh, see as I see is to show that okay there are two domains uh, and and um, okay we can see a kind of mathematics, okay, a mapping between those two domains. 
and uh, metaphor is not a matter of language. Metaphor is a matter of thinking. Metaphor is a matter of um, conceptualizations. So if we use regular uh, letters, okay, um, uh, it may not be able to show the idea. And uh, using capitalized letter okay, make these expressions stand out. But as I have said, sometimes you may see um, people not using uh, capitalized letter. So does it make sense to you, Ching uh, Nguyen? All right, thank you. Um, now, can you please log into our M Learning system? What is the deadline for our submissions of the outline for the final paper? Um, well, I will talk about the deadline in our next class, in our face-to-face -face meetings. Okay, as you see in the in the M Learning system, I um, I have created a workshop. Well, it is not enabled yet, but you will see it in our meeting next time. Now, uh, so please uh, log into our M Learning system. Uh, are you inside the M Learning system now? When you are inside, say yes, I'm ready so that I can uh, talk about the kinds of learning activities that I want you to join. Okay, so one yes. Okay, so two or three more people in the system. Um, well, I'm sorry for not posting a lot of resources to the system recently uh, because they are now too many students using our M -Learning, our M learning system and they are limit to the power of the servers and the bandwidth um, I'm trying to move our system to a new server but um, we can still use the system to get access to the resources uh, um, as, as a follow-up to this uh, lectures on conceptual metaphor I want you to explore the important concepts by going to the glossaries, metaphor and metonary, uh, metonymy concepts, and uh, watch the video posted there. Um, in our lecture online today, we have already seen the first video of George Lakeup um, explaining his work on conceptual metaphor. Um, there are all the videos okay, uh, that, that follow, and you should have a look at them. Um, the topic of metonymy will be discussed um, in uh, in the uh, coming classes, so uh, you can also w look at these videos uh, beforehand. And there are several articles, very good readings that I want you to look at. Uh, these readings will hopefully give you more ideas for your final essays, and some of you are exactly in the format of a quality research paper that uh, you need for your um, final papers and then uh, uh, okay, there's a forum so metaphors we leave by um, this is very much an open forum in which I ask you to identify the uh, um, language expression that we use every day um, in our life that are motivated by conceptual metaphors uh, in our next class, because I do not see a lot of students uh, going online right now, so in our next class, I will explain about what I expect for the outline for the final essays and uh, our schedule for the coming weeks. Um, okay. So, uh, is that clear about uh, the follow up activity after this online lecture? 
Now let's come back to our any meeting uh, window. So it's now okay exactly ten, and we have been working together for one hour and a half. I think that we work longer on okay uh, any uh, meeting uh, than than in our face-to-face -face meeting in the class, but. Uh, uh, the discussion today has been quite uh, interesting and uh, I enjoy the examples uh, you give me into the chat window. So uh, thank you very much for taking your time attending this online meeting. Um, it will soon be available in YouTube I think this afternoon or tonight. So uh, goodbye everybody and have a great weekend. Well, thank you.